Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. I know this is not a it's not a very good time, right? You might everybody is just looking at me. We just had lunch and wow, this again here is somebody blah 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 has come up again. Not even giving us time to digest. But uh, I've been there in the same spot, so I know how you are feeling right now. Well, it's a small session. It's just uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So um, uh, basically, as uh, while I was going through this panel discussion that was happening, and I was sitting at the back listening over it, uh, this is my first manufacturing summit. So uh, most of the things that I heard were uh, IT is a cost center, uh, IT is an enabler. So my argument here is that IT has gone way beyond being an enabler or a cost center. It is actually driving the growth of any industry, not only manufacturing industry, but any industry in the world. Uh, and that's what I want to present today, that those days when IT was an enabler has long become history right now. And how you can also think of uh, driving the growth of your manufacturing industry in whichever vertical you are, how you can use or leverage the strengths of IT to grow your business while IT drives that business. I'll try to cover as much as I can because I just have 15 minutes in my hand. So to start with, it's about last week when I was in Mumbai, I was uh, coming to Mantrale to meet the IT secretary, Mr. Rajesh Agarwal, and we were discussing on certain things. While I was traveling from Nasik, I saw an Italian Fiat on my way. Has everybody seen Italian Fiat? I guess everybody has, right? And look at the eyes of that Italian Fiat, the headlights and the eyes that you see. When I was crossing them, it seemed to me that they were looking into my eyes and an inner voice inside me was shouting. By the way, I shouldn't call it an Italian Fiat. I should call it with respect. You know, it was almost of my grandfather's age. Uh, let's call it the honorable. So I had the honor of passing by the respectable Italian Fiat on my way. And that those eyes were looking at me as if an inner voice was shouting that you IT savvy soul, you're always boasting about IT, the future of IT, the how IT can transform people. You know what? You were not even born when I was there. I saw your birth in front of me. And that time also manufacturing industry existed, didn't it? So what are you doing new? And you know, why are you boasting so much? Suddenly my brain paused for a while. And I started going back into 1900s. 1900s when Henry Ford came up with a car called Model T. I don't know how many have seen the pictures of Model T. But this was that car, called it the Model T. And very famously, Henry Ford quoted that customers can have this Model T in any color they want as long as it is black. And then, as I went a little forward, it was 1924, if anybody had to buy two-seater cars in Germany, they only had two choices, the Opel and the Citroen B2. And mind it, they only had two colors, yellow and light green. That's all you could get. And then I was thinking of this age. I just saw one Italian Fiat and thousands of Volkswagen and Mercedes and Marutis and all these cars passing by. And I was thinking, how many options does a car have today? The interiors, the exteriors, the trims, the VDI, LXI, ZXI. There's so many eyes I don't know. And these two eyes were looking at me as if I've done something wrong. Now, how is that possible to have so many options in a car? Is it possible for a manufacturing industry to live without information technology? Do you think it is possible? There has to be a highest level of automation so that such kind of cars could be manufactured with so many different options. And somehow I feel that when a car is born, practically one year before that car is born, that manufacturer might have actually made five different cars with different variants. That's how the cars are today. So while going through all this and thinking how much automation must be needed and what about the automation pyramid where everything starts from a purchase order, then a rough material uh, and planning uh, 
planning situation, then it goes to final production, then it goes to quality testing, then it goes to formulation. There are so many things involved today. It's no more just one car that has come out and everybody can only have that car. So while I was going through that, and then when my brain actually came out of the pause mode, I was looking for that Italian Fiat. And believe me, it was lucky that it had gone by that time because I would have actually told that car what the worth of this information technology guy here is, what he is doing. So now, IT in manufacturing industry has actually evolved a lot in last four or five decades. Starting from 1960s, so let's say after that Italian Fiat. Let's just get out of that Italian Fiat now. After that Italian Fiat in 1960s, mainframes were born. That's where the IT actually started hitting the manufacturing industry. IBM was one of the pioneers in mainframes. So it was during this time when necessary support that was needed by manufacturing. Now that was simply just entering the data, keeping the data, some files sharing between production and designing and manufacturing. That all it did. It did not do any major task. But still, at that moment, mainframe computed started assisting manufacturing. What happened in 1970s, specific applications, manufacturing industries started running specific applications on mainframes, like inventory management, control processing software, payroll software, small, small applications. Now, this, these applications, you know, many of you must know, must be written in COBOL at that time, or there were some mainframe languages, which I am really not aware of. I was not even born at that time, so. Uh, 1980s, this was the era when I existed, so PCs, personal computers were uh, coming in picture. Now what happened when personal computers came? People were able to write specific applications on one small system and that transition from IT just being a support for manufacturing industry, it actually started enabling the manufacturing industry. And how did it really enable the manufacturing industry? People were writing payroll softwares, people were writing softwares which helped to improve the efficiency of manufacturing, to decrease errors in manufacturing, in the data. And data was getting transformed into information now. So you know, there's a, there's a very thin line between data and information. So if I write a number 39, that's data, right? 39 doesn't mean anything. As soon as I say the age of this thing is 39, it starts becoming an information. Now it is a meaningful data to you. So that's what started happening in 1980s. In 1990s, the web paradigm was born. This was called the value web. So before that, you had a simple linear supply chain. So everything started from one point, it went to second point, to third point, to fourth point. What happened in value web when the client server model evolved in IT, different departments could actually talk to each other. So manufacturing, so there's a sales department, there's a process department, there's a testing department, there's a strategy department. They all started speaking to each other. They were no more islands of automation. So birth of a new paradigm, the value web. Now in the value web, one more thing happened. One company itself could be a supplier to somebody. It could be a competitor to someone else. It could be a manufacturer for somebody. It could be supplying raw material to somebody and finished goods to somebody. So one company could do many things back and forth. Up until 2000, the start of 2000 when WWW, the World Wide Web as we know it came, people were still in the manufacturing industry specifically, information technology was still being used for online entry of forms whether it was payroll data, whether it was your process data for raw material, whether it was stock, inventory, salaries, whatever it was, it was just online entry, which went, which was posted, it went from one computer to another, from one computer to another, that's all that was happening. But that's what we call automation. It also started the era of process automation and 
the IT started mixing up with manufacturing automation to come up with computer integrated manufacturing like robots or machinery tools that were actually data was fed through computers and the machinery tool behaved in a certain way. It would cut with a certain precision like diamond industry, right? They have some cutting tools. So this is where data was taken in and machines were being operated. So technology enabled process automation and data management systems. These evolved in the last decade. Currently, all of us have heard about the cloud computing. The problem is that nobody has still understood the real work of how IT can actually drive your business. Even today, people are talking IT is an enabler. IT is a cost center. And IT will remain a cost center. I completely disagree. IT is no more a cost center. It's the way you use it. And the goal of this presentation is A, what IT was, B, how IT was an enabler few decades back, even till last decade. C, by the end of presentation, I will change the minds that IT is not an enabler, it's a driver for business. And D, I'll give a practical example from Italy, how the fishing industry used the cloud to drive their growth. Oh, by the way, 1975, I was born. Because programmers were wanted. You see, 1980 PCs were coming, so God knew. So he sent me in. Programmers wanted. Now, let's see how information technology was an enabler. I would not say anymore it is an enabler. I want to change that mindset. It is no more an enabler. Any manufacturing industry, any factory, whatever it is, there are two things that every industry has. A, processes, right? B, departments. No industry exists without processes and departments. Take an example of processes. So there is an administration, order management. A purchase order comes in. It is logged in into the system. There are certain processes that it follows. Certain checks are done. There is designing that happens at the back. There's planning that happens, then a plan is followed, scheduling happens, maintenance happens, testing happens. All these are processes. How did IT help in the last decade? Information technology enabled. See, these things were already happening in last decades also. Information technology did not introduce anything new. All it did was, it made the processes more efficient, more error-free. It helped the operations, it helped the operations to do its job better. Departments, it merged the data from all the departments and it helped by giving management information systems. It gave business reports so that management can take better decisions. Ten years ago, I saw an advertisement. It was of the printers. They had like a small printer like this, this much. And the ad said that big things come in small packages. And it was really not a very small printer. But if I look back, the ad was very perfect for the last decade. Because if you go 10 years back or 20 years back, this is how the cell phone looked, a Motorola cell phone. If you go 40 years back, this is how a computer looked. So when last year, the printer, the printer making company said, that you know, big things come in small packages. That was very true, even though it was a big printer as compared to today. But the last decade was driven with things that you could not see, like wireless data was the driving force last year. World Wide Web was the driving force last year. Now, if it was today, I would rephrase it as big data or big data analytics, they come in small network packets. That would be my phrase. Because today and going forward, the manufacturing industry or any industry will not only be driven by data that we cannot see, but also by things that are weightless. And by weightless, I mean ideas. By weightless, I mean innovation. By things that are weightless, I mean knowledge. You cannot weigh all these things. Information. What happened to, what happened to companies 25 years back, if you see General Motors and Ford, 
They were one of the biggest car makers. They have 45 to 50 percent share of the world market. What happened today? Today they only have 14 percent of the world market, and Volkswagen has 14 percent of the world market. What happened to GM? What happened to Motorola? Motorola started with manufacturing radios, and till 2003, they were the first mobile maker, by the way. And till 2003, when they came up with the Moto Razor, a very slim phone, it was the best-selling phone in the world. And today, where is Motorola? What happened to it? Because it couldn't transition, it couldn't innovate from a phone to a smartphone, where you could send emails, where you had social networking, BlackBerry, Samsung, LG, took over. Motorola, the today Motorola industry is in such a problem that they've spin off a separate division for cell mode, because it's a loss-making department today. What happened to Sun Systems? Sun was one of the best server making company. But as PC started becoming more and more cheaper and powerful, nobody wanted such big servers, high-end servers. So what happened? Oracle bought it. So either these companies went out of business, they were bought by somebody, or they closed down. Apple. Apple had to reform the way they did business to stay in market. They had also gone down. Steve Jobs had to step back in and innovate things, innovate the smartphone. Now, cloud computing. What is cloud computing? See, before cloud computing came in scene, and most of the manufacturing uh, industries have an IT department. As time goes by, they keep on adding more servers because they need more new applications to run their manufacturing processes. So with time, you will see their capital investment is increasing. Now, this was the acceptable surplus. They knew that it's not going to be 100% used. But they, they had accepted, OK, 20% it will be idle. We accept that. But what if, based on today, when the recession comes, the demand goes down. When the dot-com boom comes up, the demand goes up. Today, the world goes in this manner. And the infrastructure demand also is in this manner. I'll need five minutes. Today, this surplus is unacceptable. 50% of the time, my machine is not used. And when the demand goes up, this deficit, I don't have the power to compute. What if the actual infrastructure could scale like this? And you only paid for what you are using, like a utility model, like electricity, right? You don't have to increase electricity in control panel every year. Just you pay for what you use. You can go to Google and search for Enlight Cloud. You'll get an answer to this. Now, many industries have leveraged cloud. So this is a typical example of how cloud is leveraged. In automotive industries, for GPS tracking, you can deploy latest firmware without going to the service center. Wireless safety communications are integrated. Distributors, if I want to start distribution in some other geography, if I want to start distribution in some other geography, I can do that with minimal capital expenditure. Aerospace industry, I can design aircraft, analytics and testing without building physical prototypes, you know, cutting production cost. I'll just go fast through this because the time is less. So there are these cloud computings people have leveraged in different industries. How is information technology as a driver? That's what I wanted to talk on. So last to last year, I was in Singapore. And there is amazing automation. And I'm talking about automation from animation on banners to flushing of toilets. Everything is automated. And what happened when I was on a train, people are using their cell phones and engross so much in the smartphones. Some, some of them are social texting. Some of them are buying on Flipkarts or Amazons. Some of them are chatting. Some of them are on Facebook. They are using this mechanism as a driver. And there you can review that actually it's an enabling text messaging. But it is not, because people have accepted and started using cell phones in a very, very different way. So let's say there's a manufacturer of cell phones sitting here. And they make the world's best cell phone. But if it doesn't support WhatsApp, do you think that cell phone is going to sell? No, it's not going to. It has to support social networking, because the consumer wants it. So it is no more an enabler. It is a driver. It, it, the technology, the WhatsApp, which is a technology, third-party applications. Do you think if a phone comes out without third-party applications, it is going to sell? How many of you think it will sell? It's not going to sell. 
because information technology is now driving you to make phones that has all these things in it. So enabling was just cutting costs. But here, your business will only grow if you can come up with these new technologies. Otherwise, just like GM, just like Motorola, pretty much either you're bought, up, bought by somebody or it's ended. So just saying that IT is an enabler is not true anymore. And I'm going to give, just present a two minute small video. Prima dell'adozione del nostro sistema, i pescatori avevano molto spreco. Perché essenzialmente i problemi che avevano erano sovrapproduzione del pescato, dalla sovrapproduzione del mercato un'offerta maggiore della domanda e quindi un prezzo basso, il che vuol dire bassi margini. Il nostro sistema ha due maggiori funzionalità di rilievo. Una è quella per i pescatori, cioè loro riescono a comunicare in tempo reale quanto hanno pescato e quanto stanno pescando. E l'altra riguarda il mercato virtuale, è in grado di vendere il pesce prima che le barche ritornino al porto. Adesso, grazie al supporto del cloud computing, i pescatori pescano solo la quantità di pesce richiesta dal mercato. Nel processo di trasformazione verso il cloud. Grazie all'adozione del sistema e del cloud per i pescatori c'è stato un incremento del 25% delle entrate e una riduzione del time to market del 